So what were we going to talk about? Oh, right. So um, the reason I feel this is relevant for a lot of people is uh, that the Port Swigger Web Security Labs covers a wide range of topics, um, including stuff that is relevant to developers. If you're a database developer, you should probably understand SQL injection. And if you're a web app developer, the uh, writes applications that interfaces with SQL databases, you should probably understand a little bit about SQL injection. At least maybe finish the, the first two apprentice level maps of, uh, labs about SQL injection. And uh, so you understand how those factor into your development efforts. Um, uh, as you see, they cover a lot of different topics. This is my, my actual account uh, here. And as you see, I've solved a whole bunch of these um, and let's see, they cover cross-site scripting, which is important. If you're a developer, web developer you should know about that. Cross-site request forgery is gobs of fun. We're going to visit one of those also of relevance to developers. This also of relevance to web developers. Almost all of this is, is applicable to web developers. There's some that's specific to, uh, uh say, uh, network security stuff. Um, and even this business logic isn't even, uh, technologically specific. This is just about how to structure and think about application logic. Um, OK, so that's where I am so far. <clears throat> and actually, uh, Matt just asked a question of whether or not you needed a copy of Burp to complete these labs, which is a really good question. Um, so uh, you can actually complete most of the labs uh, with uh, all of the apprentice and most of the practitioner labs, which is the free version of Burp. There's also a trial, trial version of Burp where you can uh, get most of the features. I think all of them maybe for 30 days or something. And with those, you could complete the rest. So in theory, at least it's it's possible to get through the whole curriculum uh, without buying a, a whole copy of Burp. Um, most of the labs, uh, actually, especially most of the entry level so-called apprentice labs, which I was telling the team before, are actually rather advanced. Um, most of those can be completed just with your web browser and very little else. Um, OK, so over here in this other tab, I've registered for a new account, which you can also do for free. And uh, so this is why you see that I've completed no levels. That way we can go through some of the curriculum again. Uh, over in the learning path part, part uh, it will give you an introduction to different kind of breaks the curriculum down into different uh, topic areas. So uh, here's a grouping of um, server side topics and client side topics and advanced topics. Uh, each of these actually covers, I think we'll start with, uh, let's, we could start with this. Actually, let's start with this, uh, access control. So each of these actually gives you like an article and they'll school you on the whole thing. And then they'll also point you to the labs uh, about that article. Uh, you might recognize these images. I like to use these for my team's background images. That's where they come from. Um, and this is an article about access control. Um, and again, some of these are rather high level. They don't even specifically relate to web development technologies. Uh, so here is the first access control. Uh, I say access control article. Here, sorry. Here's the first access control lab. It is, as you'll notice, apprentice level. It's very, very simple. I think this is probably the first um, the first lab that they point you to. It's certainly the first one for access control category. Um, so this one says it has an unprotected admin panel. Um, what is this? Sometimes when you go to somewhere, there is an administrative panel somewhere like this, and you can um, access things right there. Now we've I've got ours restricted, which is good, or it's at least not at that URL. But you'd be surprised how many systems have an open administrative interface, either there or something like that. And um, Port Swigger is using this lab to introduce you to that concept. Um, actually, there is a little solution thing right there, and I don't know what it does because I have never clicked it. Uh, what would be the point of looking up the solution? So, <clears throat> but uh, we can leave that as an exercise to the reader if you want to try those later, but I don't recommend you do. So as you see, I clicked uh, Access Lab, and it has put me into a uh, emulated server. This is the web application, right? Um, so it's called We Like to Shop. They use this one over and over again, uh, a whole bunch. So this would be uh, us actually 
um, assessing the security of this application, the We Like to Shop application. And up here on the right, it shows you that the lab has not yet been solved and it'll uh, that'll change its status when we go there. So now if we go back to the access control thing, we'll go back to the access control article. And they're going to talk about what is access control, and they talk about the three factors of access control. Um, in this example right here, in this image, let's take a look at this image. Probably make this bigger, by the way. Oh. Doing this, okay. So uh, in this image, they refer to this administrative panel that we were talking about that some websites fail to restrict access to. Um, and then they uh, go on to further, further stuff. So they've actually talked about this right here. Um, they'll also mention right here, actually, let's read through, <clears throat> pardon me, let's read through this part. It, uh, it says how um, um, a website might host a sensitive, sensitive functionality at a, at a URL like this, slash website, slash admin, right? And then it says this might in fact be accessible by any user um, in some cases, the administrative URL might be disclosed in locations such as robots.txt. Uh, what is robots.txt? This is a file that you place on your website to inform search engines not to uh, uh, not to spider the site. So uh, it, it's kind of um, it's kind of a less common convention these days. A lot of people are not putting these on anymore, and you'll see why. You'll see that we have one right here. And what we're saying to Google, basically Google or other well-behaved search engines, is please don't index these URLs. We don't want people. We don't want contents in here showing up in uh, search engines. However, this is um, this is not enforced in any manner, right? So it's Google's own choice not to index this. Other sites might not be so compliant. Uh, also, as you might imagine, this could be a source of information for a bad person, um, and that's what they're suggesting here. They're saying that someone might list their administrative interface uh, in um, in their robots.txt file. So I wonder if this one has a robots.txt file. Let's find out. Oh, look, it does have a robots.txt file, and it's asking Google not to index this URL. Huh, that's weird. I wonder why they don't want that URL indexed. Um, let's see what is there. And lo and behold, uh, it's the uh, administrative panel. So uh, in this lab, actually, you can always go back to this lab description. By the way, there's a quick tip to you to you there. If you're not, if you can't remember what you were trying to do, um, it'll tell you at the top. It says it has an unprotected admin panel. Cool, we found that. It says solve the lab by deleting Carlos. Now I don't know what their problem is with Carlos, but apparently he's very much hated, and uh, a lot of the labs the the uh, goal of the lab is to delete Carlos or otherwise make his, <laughs> his life painful. So, they just got uh, a thing against Carlos. <laughs> yeah, they just, for some reason, they, they hate Carlos. They called so, customer support and Carlos answered and now they're pissed. <laughs> Carlos! Carlos starts meetings early. That one's for you, Steve. Mm. Uh, so anyways, so, uh, so we delete Carlos. There's a little thing right there and it deletes it. And ta-da, you have solved the lab. So this was about the easiest lab uh, that there is here. Um, in most of the topic areas, there is a, a super simple one, almost a gimme right up front. Um, so, uh, and you can do the lab again. They actually mix things up every time. So you'll find out the URLs are different, different things are different. You can't really go get like a, a uh, you know, a solve uh, like a cheat sheet or something because they mix everything up every time. Okay. So that was kind of a gimme, a gimme. Um, this is server side request forgery. You've probably seen this background on my team's uh, thing before. Uh, I'm a big fan of server side request forgery. It's a lot of fun. Um, this is actually, a, I mean, I'll leave this as an exercise to the reader. Look at the server side request forgery uh, topic and there's, a, I don't know, maybe 12 labs in there about it. But basically this is about getting through your web application and tricking it to interacting with internal systems. So most, most people, most of the time when you're worried about web application attacks, you're worried about it interacting with the attacker. In this case, we're tricking the application into interacting with internal systems, either to get something done or to give us some information. And you would be surprised, or maybe you wouldn't be surprised if you're involved in infrastructure or engineering, 
um, at how much access uh, applications have to internal systems. Because people are thinking very often the conversation will go something like, oh, well, that's internal. Don't worry about that. Is it really, though? Because someone might be able to use the um, a flaw in the web application as a conduit to accessing those internal systems. So those internal systems still have to be secured, and this is where defense in depth comes from. All right, so uh, we won't read through this whole article in here. Uh, but the basic concept is that, so actually this part calls it out quite well. Uh, here is, if you look at the HTML source of a form designed to post to a web application, it might look something like this. Um, there will be something that places a URL request, something like this, and it will be placing a request to an internal server. So this is some sort of internal server. Um, and the goal in an SSRF uh, attack will be to make use of this communications channel to contact an internal system, right? So in this case, they've referred to localhost, which is the server itself. But uh, as this diagram implies, this can also be used as a conduit to uh, further internal systems. All right, let's pop over to the first uh, SSRF lab. Oh, and cool, look, it says one right here, so we've made our progress. Um, one out of, what is this, 270 some odd? I don't know, there's a lot, there's like 220 labs. Um, what's the goal in this one? It says this website has a stock check feature which fetches data from an internal system. Ooh, that sounds uh, like a good turf for an SSRF attack. Um, it says to, to solve the lab, change the stock check URL to access an internal admin interface. There it is at localhost admin and delete Carlos. <clears throat> Screw you, Carlos. Um, OK, so we start up the lab and it's actually spinning up a virtual server instance back at Burp Labs. How cool is it uh, that they provide all of this for free? Also, um, the products in this catalog are just hilarious. Um, the trapster here for $25. A lazy dog, he's got wings. I don't understand this product catalog. It's really strange. Anyways, okay, so they say there's a stock check feature. Where is that? Let's take a look at one of these. Let's take a look at the poop head inventory. All right, anyways. Well, I really like this poop hat. Um, they have three different high-end locations in London, Paris, and Milan. So uh, let's see if they have the poop hat in stock in Milan. I never I understood fashion. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, okay, one thing I didn't anticipate was that it was that it might be difficult to get through these labs without laughing. All right, so according to this fancy web application, there are 809 poop hats in Milan waiting for us. Uh, let's check London. Uh, look, 315. Uh, to, so. <clears throat> A little basic familiarity with web application development will imply to you already, you'll go, okay, I know what's happening. I click on this thing and it places an Ajax request to a backend server uh, to check the inventory and then puts the, the response right here. That's probably what's happening. Let's find out if that's what's happening. Um, you could use Burp for this. You don't really need it quite yet. Um, that would be a bit of overkill. Uh, you have everything you need to mount this sort of SSRF attack and to analyze the target in your browser. Uh, so uh, right click on this where you want to start looking at stuff and choose inspect. Alternatively, you can hit F12 or choose your whatever method you prefer uh, for uh, accessing the developer tools. It might look a little different depending upon your browser. Okay, so here is the source of the um, form that we're just, the step, it's stock check form is what they're calling it. Um, and uh, yes, eventually you do need to be able to learn uh, to read HTML. And um, so all of this should be like second nature to you, but someday, not quite yet. Okay, so when we, it says right here, the action on the form is to place a post request to product slash stock. And then it apparently places a post request to different Right, so it accesses different URLs depending upon which store you want to check, right? So we'll do that again, and just so that we see how that happens. So we go to London, we hit check stock, and it's apparently placing a request to this one that says store ID equals one, London, right? Um, so you can modify this right here. 
I'm going to change this to not London, right? And uh, let's say I change this store ID to three, which according to this HTML is actually Milan. Uh, so when I check not not London, it actually is giving me the right the stock check from uh, from from is it stock check from Milan? There we go. Okay, so we have shown that we can modify the form, right? So that works. Uh, the lab said, what did the lab say? Go back to the lab description. Lab says there's, they've given us a little Intel, uh, advanced Intel from early recon. They said they already know that there's an admin interface at localhost admin. Well, I can't get to localhost from outside, but oh, wait a minute. This uh, web form, actually, this HTML form places requests to internal servers. That's very interesting. Maybe we can change the URL for the London stock check to localhost admin. Would that work? That can't work. That'd be crazy. Oh my God, it worked because the internet is broken and uh, pretty much everything about the web technology stack is, is horribly broken. Uh, it's built on a flawed trust model and that's why my entire profession exists. Um, so, Instead of it returning, what's happened here is instead of it returning the stock check, um, it has placed a request to the back to the URL localhost slash admin and returned the response to us, right? And this, this has been kind of made weak. It's been made into a weak target on purpose because this is training, right? Usually it's not going to be so straightforward and give me easy like this, right? Uh, it, it's not just going to show up in the HTML, but it, this is not far off from the kind of SSRFs you do see in the real world. And there's Carlos. Screw you, Carlos. So we delete Carlos, <laughs> just like we said. Oh, wait, look, it says admin interface only available as logged in as an administrator. I had forgotten about that part. Let's see, where are we? Do, 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 do. I'm actually going to have to solve this thing like real time. Um, all right. Let's take a look at this form again. Interesting. It does a post. You know, I might change this to a get actually. Now I, I might change it to this instead. Okay. Okay, so let's check stock on not London. And see if we get the admin interface. We do not, because it won't place an HTTP. Maybe. Let's load this again. I actually did not anticipate having to literally solve this one again. Check this to make sure it works. Okay, that all works. I'll go this time I'll do Paris instead. Paris stock, there is that. Oh, by the way, I think this is interesting. Yeah. See, so when we checked uh, Paris stock and we had already changed the URL for Paris stock, look at what the what the response is. It gets the content from localhost slash admin and then returns it to us as the result. But it also includes the word units. Because all of this content is just supposed to be a number like 312 or something. Um, I think that's funny. This is actually the kind of thing you will really see in uh, in real world SSRFs and also in uh, cross site scripting, um, where you'll see that it 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 just inserts the thing right into where it's supposed to be, and you might see like the rest of the content that you were supposed to see. Uh, so you might see like your SSRF payload uh, or the response returned as it'll be embedded among other other content in there. So it's not going to. Like this. Logged in as administrator. 
you have to log in. Paris. And yeah, it's going to update this every time. That. Yeah, I can go to admin panel. Logged in as an administrator. Let's go back and see if the lab has a tip. <sighs> um, let's see. So they might want. All right, it might want one two seven. Dot zero dot zero dot one instead of local host. So let's try this. So you guys know those are functionally uh, equivalent for the most part, but the web application side might be checking to see how it was accessed. Nope. See, they're giving us a clue right here. There's two ways to get to this: either request it from a loopback or be logged in as administrator. You're using 127 as a loopback, correct? Yeah. 27, 127 to 0 to 1. Guy. Interesting. Oh, okay, so yeah, usually the, the tutorial text leading up to the lab will be uh, pretty obviously giving you hints. This is the key right here. However, when the request uh, to the admin URL comes from a local machine itself, the normal access controls are bypassed. The application grants full access as it appears to originate from a trusted location. Obviously, I solved this lab before. I'm just trying to remember how the heck I did it. It should be a cat. Well, if I don't solve this one uh, before the end of the session, I just won't include it in the recording. <laughs> and the, just cut the recording to you later figuring it out and then pay. <laughs> Just stitch it in. <laughs> There's a bit, I'm wearing a different tie. <laughs> yes. All right, that's not going to work. Uh, the cool part is like one of the things about, um, you know, about web application hacking by this method is, uh, and the cool part is, like, I'm not worried about breaking this stuff. So it's a little bit different than when we're doing our day jobs, right? With the day jobs, I have to be worried about stuff I might send to our website, lest something actually happen. Um, why does, okay, what is it thinking? So it knows, oh, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I, I just figured this out. Mm. Right, yeah, this URL doesn't go to the place I want it to go to. So let's see what this form does now. It would go to admin, delete username Carlos. I think what I should do is change this to, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So look, the admin panel, this is what the admin panel does when you click delete Carlos. It places this request to slash admin delete username equals Carlos. By the way, probably not the best web application design, <laughs> right? That's a little bit crazy. Um, all right, I get it, I get it, I get it. 
OK, so here's what we did. First, we. Uh, first, we mutilated the check stock feature so that we could get it to uh, access the admin URL. Then with access to the admin URL, we discovered this URL, which is how a user named Carlos would be deleted. Um, but we can't get to that from here. But what we can do is we can get the stock check feature uh, to place that request for us, right? So, all right, I'm going to reload this page. I'm going to check the stock check feature again. You notice how redundant this process is. Every time I check things to make sure everything works the way it used to work. So go down here. Yeah, this is going to do it. Let's go down here. We look at the uh, form. I'm going to change London to the URL for uh, the admin panel command to delete Carlos, right? So I took this from, right? So I've taken that from the admin uh, panel. We couldn't have gotten there without looking at the admin panel first. Otherwise, we wouldn't have known the URL. OK, so I'm going to call this option delete Carlos. Now there's a new option in the menu called delete Carlos. And when I do check stock, I wonder if it deleted Carlos. It did. See, at the top, it, sort of, it suddenly switched to congratulations, you solved the lab. Uh, we could test, it, test this anyways. In fact, we'll just change this one to, what was it, localhost admin? OK, so we'll check stock on Paris, and it's going to show us, I'm certain, that Carlos does not exist because he's been deleted. Screw you, Carlos. Um, all right, so that's how that works. Um, and that's actually the entire process of uh, solving a Ports Wigger Labs uh, lab. Um, the entire process involves analyzing the web application, understanding how web application vulnerabilities work, uh, forgetting what you're doing, um, and then suddenly having a uh, an aha moment. And uh, that's why I uh, that's why I love hacking. Um, so uh, that that's cool. That worked out pretty well, huh? That's worked very good stuff. Yeah, thank you. So there are uh, I don't know, like as I said before, there's what is this? Uh, 180, um, 210. There are 210 total labs. Uh, uh, even uh, cyber security ninja uh, Gary has not completed all of them. So uh, you still a chance to beat me uh, on this. And I would be humiliated if somebody beat me. So um, there's a lot to learn there. As I said, there are a lot of different uh, topics, um, which is fantastic. So if you're a developer, you can focus on things like um, uh, cross-site scripting, uh, clickjacking. This would be good. We do have clickjacking findings sometimes, so it'd be nice if people looked at those. Uh, cross-site request forgery is actually, it's kind of the uncharted territory right now of web application security. So we don't have a very good understanding of our exposure to CSRF right now. Uh, that would be a good thing for developers to get informed with, uh, be informed with. Uh, database developers should probably um, consider looking into this SQL injection stuff. Um, system uh, developers and engineers and administrators should look into things like business logic and command injection. Uh, stuff like directory traversal and information disclosure comes up a lot, and we usually don't have time to address them considering the uh, severity of our of our other issues. So hopefully that was of value to people, and I promise this would only be 45 minutes, so that still leaves me 15 minutes for lunch, uh, which is cool. Uh, hopefully we'll have more attendees in the future, and uh, I can share this video with the IT collaborators, and hopefully that'll generate more interest. What do you guys think of it so far? Yeah, I think it was good. Yeah, that was cool. I'm actually glad I got lost on the second one. Otherwise, it would have seemed all staged, right? <laughs> so, OK, cool. That was fun. Hey, thanks for joining, guys. Yeah, thanks for asking, Gary. Oh, and by the way, I am uh, uh, still going to follow up with uh, Nick about burp licenses. And I talked about it with Dimitri, too. So we've got, sorry, Dimitri. So we've got like two two angles to chase up. Yeah, if not, I'll just have to bite the bolt in. Buy a license. <laughs> I know. I hate buying it like 
um, I've had a, I have worked at places where they provided it and stuff, but if they don't, like, I I also be like, ah, you just got to do it. So, but yeah. I use it for work like a lot all the time, especially for validating stuff. Like when we have um, you know appsec findings and we want to validate the fixes, it's one of the fastest ways to do it. I don't have to wait for Rapid Seven or anything. So, awesome. Okay, gents. Um, thanks. I'll see you at the next one. I hope there'll be a next one. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Bye, Earl. See you.